Hello, everyone. Hey, let's see. As promised, I'm here. I'm going to do a fun tutorial today. And I'm just going to check out and see people. I'm using StreamYard. And so I want to get that all set up. Let's see what's going on. Okay, let's see, make sure we're streaming. All right, good. So we have about four people. Now, um, I think there's a button on this. If you want me, if you want to make a comment, hello. Comes up on my end as Facebook user. Oh, it's Judith. I'm, I'm looking on my other screen to see who it is. But if you click a button, I think it says here, it says on the um, post, it says I'm going live using StreamYard. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, you just have to give permission. And that's in, there's a link in the post. If you click that, then it will um, let me see who you are. So that's good. Hi, Beverly. All right, this is fun. I'm excited. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I think this is going to kind of blow your mind that this is really so easy to do. Uh, it's just a lot of text. Hi, Lori. Hi, Sandra. This is fun. Um, I'm hoping to do another uh, Zoom live again. Those are kind of fun. Sandra took them with me. A bunch of you guys took them with me. And um, those are kind of fun because we can all talk to each other too. And that's nice, you know, it's like a little more social, but this is just an easy way to just kind of get it out to the group and out to the masses. So, all right, I'm going to um, just want to tell you guys a couple things while I've got you here. So just remember that this tutorial and all tutorials, depending on which group it's in, will live in the units of our group. So if you ever like want to look back and say, oh, how did she do that? Just go to the units and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to share the screen and then show you the units on my, so let's see, I forgot how to do this. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen with you guys. I think you can see this. So if you look here, um, this is the group that we're in right now. And uh, you can see here to the left, there are units right there. So this group doesn't have a large amount of units. I have a unit that says, I just got my glasses on so I can see what it says, that says Facebook Live Tutorials. And then there was the last one that I did in this group was how to make the silhouettes. So um, I will put this tutorial into that unit. That way it's always kind of stored in there. If you're coming from our other group and you're not in our other group, our other group is, most of you probably are from the other group though. Um, our other group is, um, ooh, hi from Malta. Ooh. Hi Janet, hi Deb. Um, I'm, I would say everybody's names, not, they're not all showing up for me. But um, all right, the other group that we have, of course, most of you come from there is, um, whoops, there we go. Inside the photo box. And then if you're not familiar with this group, it's same awesome people, but we're hitting, I don't know, we're gonna hit 20,000 people pretty soon. That's pretty exciting. Um, and that will be happening. We have units in there, but there is a ton of stuff in these units, okay? Tons and tons, all right? So this one has about building the box, about a photo box design store, about editing the box, getting your freebies. And it also has um, Santa in the box, building, here we go, pricing the box photo editors, people who want to edit for other people. I, I just, you know, it's been two years, so we've, we've accumulated a lot. Cardboard box tutorials. So all of the tutorials that live inside that group are in your units and so much more. Okay. Just want to get back to our other group so I can kind of keep an eye. And, uh, That way I can see tutorial. All right, I'm going to uh, come back here. And all right, so I'm gonna get started. And I just wanna tell you guys one more exciting thing. So a lot of you have known me for the last two and a half years and you know I have a store that sort of came out of the box group and has grown and that we have featured artists in our store. For the last two years, we've taken on different um, artists who are basically members starting in the box group, basically members of the box group who are making these amazing templates and wanted to sell them 
and I offered to sell in the store. So this has grown and grown and grown, and uh, we have like 10 or 11 feature artists now, but it was a lot for me to handle being able to keep up with um, uploading all those templates, especially Christmas season. All I did was come home from work and then I uploaded templates all day long. So very exciting news. It's been going on for a while, but hopefully, hopefully it's gonna happen soon. I have a new store coming out, a new digital marketplace, and it's a true digital marketplace. So once we're going, once we're going, I will take on more uh, feature artists and basically you'll have like a store inside my store. You'll be able to have controls and upload your own templates, set your prices. It's really kind of cool. Um, it's just taking a little bit longer than I thought to develop, but it's almost there. It's like live. I don't want to show it to you because um, in case you buy something by accident, things are not 100% like done, but it's very exciting. And um, so when that comes out, I'm going to uh, have a grand opening sale. So, um, okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. And that is, um, over here. Oops, sorry guys. I'm gonna share my screen again. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Okay. And I'm gonna, here, I had to share my screen again. And here we go. Okay, so let's get going. I'm in a tutorial. You want to have a high baseball? <laughs> okay. That's my son helping my husband today. He just finished up his third semester of college, and uh, my daughter just graduated college last week, actually officially yesterday, so it's been a lot of stuff going on here. All right, here we go. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to try to take myself out of this, and there we go. All right, so here's my screen. Um, I've been playing around with uh, this text, and, you know, everything is learn as you go, right? Like, everything is do it, and then you'll learn. And as you do things, you learn them. So I'm self-taught. So if anyone here is saying, oh man, how am I ever gonna learn all the stuff, the box stuff, the composites, just, just do, just do stuff. Because the more you do, the more you learn. I mean, even with the templates, like I'm a photographer before I, I'm a template maker. I've been a photographer for seven years. And I started out with, you know, like a point and shoot that with a long lens and I moved myself into longer lenses and then I moved myself into, portraits after do, learning how to do sunsets and you know landscapes everything is like a trial and error right but you have to do it to learn it and so you go from I went from landscapes to portraits and then I was like oh how do I do that photoshop thing to make the skin look better or change things and I learned photoshop and that's a big undertaking if you're new to photoshop it's a big one really I mean don't you know don't I know it's frustrating so every project that you do you learn from so if you if you really want to learn more set yourself with a project that's just like a smidge higher than what you know and then learn it and how do you learn it you can google it you can take tutorials go on youtube I mean I, I pretty much have a youtube education um, and then you just like experiment. So what I'm going to teach you today is not something I knew like two months ago, but over time I've been experimenting and learning. And so I'm going to teach you. Okay, here it goes. Um, okay, so we're going to do stuff like this where we're going to make, you know, templates. Basically, you're going to be customizing your own projects. So what I did was I have here actually kind of like this one better. I had a whole bunch of them that I was playing with. And let's see what this one is. Oh, that one I was, ooh, isn't that fancy? I was playing with that one today. Um, I was making that as a template, but I wanted to pull out a different picture. Okay, I really like this picture, so I'm just gonna open this one up in its own layer. So here I have it opened it up in its own layer. I, I like this one because I think it has like a lot of negative space and it could make for something that would you can use um, text with. So, um, all right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna need text. You need, need to know how to use your text layer. Text layer is the T over here, all right? So I click on the T and your texts are up here. So here are all your different fonts and you can always add more fonts 
um, and you can look for fonts and I find almost all my fonts, I've never paid for a font, I find all my fonts for free. I Google, I write, I type in free fonts. If I'm looking for like curly letter fonts, I'll type in, you know, Google t curly letter free font. If I if I'm doing um I'm I'm not doing a Facebook live. Okay. Everyone's walking through my house. Um so I look for my fonts, I get my fonts, and then um I bring them into, into Photoshop. So I like for this kind of style, I like to use something like chunky, like freshman is a good font, bold Van Demo is a good font, uh, Arial Black. All right, so I'm just gonna pick this one. I'm gonna pick my vote, this one, I like that one. And you have to play with it. You have to see like certain fonts are bigger than other fonts. So um, I know already that this is, I'm gonna need something more like 300 points, all right? And I'm in the regular mode. Play with these modes up here. Regular, what does that mean? Um, it could change for every different font. Sharp, crisp, smooth, play with it. See what that does for you. This is all your alignments. If you're, if you're making, um, if you're typing in, this is the color of your font. So, and this, I'll show you that. I'm gonna do some kind of fun stuff. So I'm gonna click on here, and I'm just gonna put the letter, I'm gonna write in D. A D. I'm going to show you two things today. Okay, two different ways to work with um, making these bubble letters, which is kind of cool. So I've got my dad in here. I'm going to press my check mark. I'm going to take my move tool, which is my letter V, or just my move tool, and I'm going to move it. And then if I want to make it larger, which I might, <coughs> excuse me. If I make it larger, I'm going to go back to my T for my tool. I'm going to double click on my word. I'm going to go up here, and I think I'd like to make this more like, and I have to type this in manually, more like 500. All right. Okay. And now I'm going to take my, I'm pressing the letter V from making to get to my move tool. I'm just going to kind of move it around. I can do this also. I can go back to my T tool, and I can see where my spacer is. I'm just going to press my, um, uh, my shift, not my shift, the, uh, the, the long, the long button in the center of your keyboard. What is that called? Somebody type that in. Cause I can't think of the word. I'm clicking that just to give my a space bar, my space bar. There we go. And I'm just moving my shift with my mouse and I'm moving it over. Okay. So now I have my dad. Uh, another thing you can do also with your text is you can also grab it if you're in your free transformation tool. So generally, when I'm in my move tool, I have this checked here which says show transformation controls. If I don't click that, you see that I lost the box around it. And then I would have to press Command T because I'm on my Mac, Command T. Oh, thank you, Melissa, spacebar, right? Um, yeah, and then get my free, my free transformation tool back but I, when I'm in my move tool, like to keep this show transformation tools on, and then I can just grab the edge here, and I can enlarge it a little bit, and I can make it smaller if I didn't want to do it the other way. Press the check mark. I'm sorry if there's noise going on. I probably shouldn't be doing this in my kitchen when everyone decided to come home and make lunch. <laughs> so maybe if. The other people in my house could maybe, maybe just bring it down a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we'll just start with this. So now we have our letters. That's basically easy. Again, I'm gonna press my T tool. I'm gonna double click on there and highlight it. I wanna show you what this tab does. This gives you lots of options. It opens up over here for me. It's the character tab. Okay, I'm just moving it so you can see. It says what the text is. It also gives you an option to bold. And every text has a variety of different options. Um, italics, this, you just play. Like I said, just play, all right? And you'll see what different things do. All right, I think I kinda like the bold. I'm gonna keep it there. There is also this button right here that would give you a warping if you wanted to, let's say, warp your letters. This is how you go about warping. And you could try out different types of warps. 
All right, I don't really want to warp, but I wanted to show you that. So the next step to get, so this looks nice, this is fine, but I am going to um, take my bottom layer here. I'm gonna click off the, um, I'm gonna just make a duplicate. So I'm just dragging it down to the duplicate area or I could press Command J and that will make a duplicate. And that's my background copy duplicate. So um, that's my duplicate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it up and on top of my dad. And of course, what happens is that I lose it, right? Because dad is now covered by my background layer. What I'm going to want to do is make a clipping mask. But I'm going to show you something. If I make a clipping mask and clip these letters to dad, look what happens. I'm going to right clip click on it. I'm going to press uh, create clipping mask. And you don't see anything, right? Because it just clips it right to dad, but it just all blends together. So I'm going to turn that off for now. I'm going to even just release my clipping mask. I'm just going to turn it off. I wanted to show you that. I've got my dad letters. What I want to do now is I want to right click on dad and go up to this thing called blending options. If you don't know about blending options. There are so many things you can do in my blending options. I mean, so many that when you open up this layer style panel, it's going to blow your mind. And this you should take, um, take this little by little because I don't even really know how everything in this works, but I just play with it and I just learned. So one of the things I'm going to want to do right now is I want to create like a line, a stroke around the dad letters. So I'm going to click on the word stroke. Now you can't see, I'm gonna also click on, see it's not, there's nothing highlighted. I'm gonna click on that stroke. It opens up this panel here. Now this is the size of my stroke, but you see now that my stroke is black. I'm gonna change it to white so that you can really see what I'm talking about. And all I did was go into color. So now you can see that my stroke is white. It's going around the dad letters and I could change the size of it like that. I can also change like the look, the position of the stroke. So it could be outside or inside or in the center. And those are just three options that you should play around with because when you're trying to achieve an effect, it's always good to go through the different options that you have and that will also um, give you different um, perspectives on what, on, on achieving your goal. There is an opacity. So the opacity is, you know, how much of it you can see. So I'm gonna keep it at 100%, and you could change your fill type from color to a gradient. So let's say you wanted you know, a gradient like that. It's always cool. Or you can, and then you could change around your gradients to like a radial gradient, an angle, it just changes the colors. Um, play with all these, see how they look. Or you can also um, you know, change the color of your gradients you go into that panel, you can add more gradients or you can change it to a pattern. Um, and when you click them here, you could see a variety of different patterns. So there's a lot you can do. Um, so for now, I'm just gonna leave it with the color of white and press okay. So now let me show you again. I'm gonna go back to my background copy and turn it on. I'm gonna click on my background copy, I'm right clicking and I'm creating a clipping mask. And now you can see that this layer, the exact duplicate of the first layer is, hang on a second, I just wanna make sure you guys can see everything. Okay, good. Um, you can see that this layer, the exact duplicate of my layer is now clipped to dad. If you're not familiar with clipping masks, that's a whole nother lesson. I think in the box, I think, I don't remember which, which group I did it in, but I did do an entire tutorial on clipping masks not that long ago. It was either in this group or it was in the other group. So you might wanna go to the units and check that out because I really go into clipping masks. Clipping masks are amazing. Um, so I now clipped it to the dad and you can see the stroke. 
if you look here, it says effects. Every effect that you apply to the layer is going to now be listed below. So that white stroke is right there. I'm gonna click it off. And now, of course, it's still clipped to dab, but you can't see it because there's no stroke applied anymore. So I clicked it back on. But I wanna go back into the stroke, I mean, into the effect. So I could do one of two things. I can click back on the dab layer, right click, go to blending options, or I can just click right on effects, double click on it, and it opens up my layer style panel. Now, here's how we're going to get that really cool 3D effect. And again, trial and error. Um, I'm gonna start out by leaving my stroke there. I might change the color of the stroke. We'll play around with that later. Oh, and if, if you wanna add like a second stroke and a third stroke, you can do that by just pressing the plus sign and then going to that stroke, that second stroke and changing the color. And like you can see, maybe I'll add, I'm just gonna show you, a red, I'm adding this red stroke, pressing okay. Now that stroke is, is outside, so I would have to make it a little bit bigger than the one. And now I have like a double line stroke, which is really cool, right? Or you could change this to inside. And then the double line, the second stroke is on the inside here. So that's one really cool feature that you may not know about. Again, placing it in the center, it kind of just actually takes the first line and puts that in the middle. So see, that's, that's cool, right? It's like such cool stuff that I didn't know about a long time ago. I'm gonna turn off that stroke for now. I'm gonna go to bevel and emboss. I'm gonna click that on. Now I've already played with that, but look at that. Look at that already, already. I have hardly done anything, but what I already had was certain presets set for me because I was doing it from before. So the bevel and emboss, you can go into this whole panel here and play with it, right? Isn't that what my like motto is, play with it? Go, I, I different techniques, chiseled and hard. Ooh, that one looks good, I like that one. Chisel hard, uh, chisel soft, chisel hard. Inner bevel, emboss, that's really cool. Depth, play with your depth. You can also go here to highlight mode if you want your highlights to be white. If you want them to be a different color, go to the different color and change them. It just changes the look. I like to play with it just the way I'm doing it now, just the way I, I just showed you because, um, because then I really can see what the effects look like. I don't wanna like put my effects on, then turn them on and see my letters. I wanna play with my letters until I get them the way I like them. All right, so um, play with your highlight mode, play with your, and then you can do the opacity on the highlights and see what that means, right? Highlights, shadow mode, usually your shadow is black, opacity. Let's bring that shadow up. That shadow is for what's going on in the sides over there. That's really cool, okay? Um, bring your opacity down, you see less of a shadow. Can you change the shadow color? Sure you can, click on the color. You can also, if you, if you drag your uh, cursor out onto here, you can, you can always pick up a color. Like I might wanna pick up this pretty color. Now I've made my shadows the color of the blue water. Press okay. You can also add a contour. So I'm gonna press on contour and then I'm gonna click on contour. And then um, sometimes, you know, it adds something cool to it. Sometimes it doesn't. It's really, uh, you can also add a texture. So clicking on texture here, we have a texture. I'm gonna scale it up and you're gonna see what happens. There's like this cool texture going on inside of the letters now. You can click on here to see different types of textures. Um, I believe there's ways of adding your own texture. It's kind of cool, look at that. You can add more textures by clicking on here and then um, there's a whole bunch of other textures that are, these are all preloaded textures from Photoshop. So it's gonna tell you, do you wanna append it? And I always say yes, because if I don't say yes, I will lose the textures that are in there now. Those are the preset ones. You don't lose them forever, you can put them back. You can reset them, I'm just adding them to the bottom. So this is the next set of textures I just added to the bottom. So now I've got some cool textures that you can add right into your letters. And then you can also, just the way you Google um, font, you can also Google textures, I believe. And then you can also load new textures in by um, going in here and uh, loading pattern. I don't remember how I did it. I did do put one in a while ago and just load them in. Oh, it goes into the, the pattern section. So 
again, you'll have to play with stuff like that. Um, I don't really want the texture, although it is kind of cool. I'm going to press OK. And hang on a second. I'm going to let my dog out. And I'm back. All right. So there you go. Um, I want to see if I see any comments here. I haven't really been looking that hard. OK. Um, Oh, can you, can you let him back in? I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't shut the door. Thank you. All right, so let's see. Um, I don't know. Terry asked me if I could have more than one stroke in Photoshop Elements. I, I'll be honest with you. I've never actually used Photoshop Elements, so I really don't know. The only thing I do know about Photoshop Elements is that you can't use folders. I've learned that the hard way because I've had to take some of my templates out of folders. Like I like to use folders in my templates and I've had to unfolder them for people who use Photoshop elements so that they're able to use the templates. Um, but that's that's really, you know, the end of it. That's all I really know. I'm sorry, you'll have to try that one out yourself, Terry. Um, just gonna look again, see if anybody has any questions. Let's see, um, okay. I'm looking, looking, anybody have any questions? So that is, that's, oh, one other thing that I like to do is also, I'm gonna go back. Okay, now look here, look in your effects panel right down there. You see that it says effects, bevel and emboss. That was our bevel and emboss layer. If you wanna turn that off, you turn off like that. It goes back to the stroke, turn off the strokes. So you could turn off and on the things that you are using. I'm gonna double click back on my effects. And I'm gonna go to um, a drop shadow because I think a drop shadow always looks pretty cool in these. And I just add a little drop shadow to this. Um, and I'm just gonna also again, I don't know why it's not working. Maybe my distance is off. I have no distance on my drop shadow. There we go. Okay, so I, I, I'm playing around with the distance. You play around with the spread of a drop shadow, okay? Gives you some harder or softer shadows, right? Depending on the spread. There's your size of your drop shadow. All right, so when you increase that size, you really like, you know, give it a little bit more of a smooth look. And then when you have a small size, it's a much harder line shadow. This is like, you know, if you have a hard light, this is if you have very soft light, and you have your distance. You can also change the angle. So when you're working, let's say, you know, with something that you wanna really give the effect that there's light um, and creating a shadow off of it, you can move your angle and that moves the angle of the shadow. Um, so you can play with these things. I really never play too much more with the color. You can play with, your, you know, you could change your, I don't play with my blending modes too much. You could change the color of your shadow if you wanted to. Again, you could find a, um, I just color picked right from my, right from my, uh, from my photo. And, you know, that's kind of cool. But you could just go back to your black shadow if you want. You know, you don't really need a shadow for the sky, but it does let it stand out a little bit. Maybe just like a tiny little shadow is nice, right? And maybe like just very opaque. So it's just like, it just kind of enhances the 3D effect. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna click on and off that drop shadow to show you the difference. No drop shadow, drop shadow. No drop shadow, drop shadow. All right, so, you know, I mean, it's in the sky. You're not really gonna have a shadow in the sky, but it does enhance the 3D effect. All right, so let's see, do you have any questions? Okay, in your samples on Facebook, the letters were more transparent. How do you make them more transparent so you can see the background through it? Um, I think they're just more transparent because, um, here, if I go back into the effects and I go back into my bevel and emboss, I think it might have to do with like um, how much I play with the opacity in my highlights. You see that? I'm making, I like really took the opacity off my highlights and you can really see it now. So this is the, this is the highlight. I actually gave it like this weird pink color. I'm gonna go back to a white highlight. Um, if I pull my opacity all the way up, you can still see through the letters, but the highlights are really strong now, where if I go all the way down to nothing, and then same with shadow mode, you know, but that kind of takes it, you want your shadows, because your shadows really give you like, you know, the 3D form. So, um, but that I think, so this is, you know, depending on how much you want to be able to see through it, 
um, is, uh, you know, looking through and how much you want to see through it is how you just have to play in the bevel emboss. Okay. And like I said, this is something that I do while I'm creating. Um, I don't look at my panel and say to myself, oh, you know what, you guys, um, right now I'm going to use this amount of depth and this amount of um, opacity and this amount of, I really like, I turn it on, I play until I like it. And I go, ooh, that looks good, or oh, not so much. So, um, okay, so that is one. Does anyone else have a question? Hey, Andrew. Let's see. Beverly asked, did you do your text work on the duplicate layer? Okay, so no, let's look back at it again. All right, I'm gonna go back to full screen. So looking at this in full screen again. All right, looking at this in full screen, looking at where my text is. My duplicate layer is the layer I clipped to my text. All right, it is clipped to my text right here. If I turn off my duplicate layer, this is what you have, whoops. I'm gonna turn off my duplicate layer and see, you still have your dad letters and you have it all 3D'd out and the embossing at all, the effects are still applied, but I took the copy of my background, I dragged it on top of my dad letters and then I used it, I'll show you again, I'm gonna right click on it. I'm here, I just released my clipping mask. I'm turning it on my layer and I'm creating a clipping mask by right clicking. And now I've clipped it right onto it and that's how I get the effect that it looks like it's see-through, but that's really just an illusion, right? Because anything I clip to that is what you're going to see in the letters. I just used the exact same um, image to give the illusion like it's kind of passing through even if it's really not. So, See if anyone else has questions about that. Just looking to get back to my, all right. Did that make sense to you guys? So here, I'll, let me just show you something. Let's just say I want to go, I'm going to go file, um, place embedded. I want to get a new picture and um, I'm just going to pull really like anything up. All right. Just like the first thing I see. All right. So I'm pulling up this flower and I really don't even care what it looks like. And now I'm going to um, just drag the flower down here. You can see now it gets, it got clipped to dad, but you're still seeing this top layer. I'm gonna um, turn this layer off. And now you can see that the flower is clipped into the dad letters, all right? And then you could always press Command T and move it around, resize it. So, you know, you don't have to give that illusion, but that's what I was kind of demoing today, was giving that illusion like it's passing through. All right. Yes. I'm sorry, I can't see everyone's names. If you click on um, the top of the, the – um, if you click on the top, you'll be able to see that I could – there's a, a – there's a little thing that gives permission that I could see your name, so I'm not really sure who's talking. But yes, whoever said they were late, you can definitely watch a replay. It's going to be in the units of this group. Okay, it'll live there forever. Um, okay, let's try something else. Let me show you something else that's kind of cool. All right, and I'm just gonna. Does anybody else have any questions before I switch over? Something else? Let's see. Looking good, everyone with me so far? Thumbs up just to tell me if you're, you're with me. All right. Oh, okay, good. All right, so let's just show you one more thing, all right? I'm going to uh, turn off the dad letters here. And I'm gonna release this clipping mask. And I'm just gonna um, turn on I'm going to turn on now. I'm going to go back to my font. And this time, oops, instead of writing out dad all in one shot, I want to show you something else that you can do. That's kind of cool. I don't know. Oh, 
guys, hang with me one second. I forgot to plug my computer in. Ugh, we don't want it to die. That would be so sad if it died on us in the middle of a tutorial. Okay. Um, plugging in. Sorry for that weird view of my nose. All right, and I'm back. Okay, so I'm gonna show you something else now that's kind of cool, and this is something a little bit different. Same idea, but different way of handling things, okay? So let's say, um, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna put my letter, I'm gonna put the letter D in. Now remember, I'm already at 500 points up there. This is the color of my font, and I'm just gonna press the letter D, all right? I like it, I'm gonna press the check mark. I'm gonna go to my move tool, which is the letter V, and I'm just gonna move my letter D, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to my T tool, my text tool, click on here, and I'm gonna press the letter a, all right? So now you're gonna see that my letters are not connected to each other. I'm gonna take, go back to my move tool, press it, and I'm gonna take my D and move it over there. Then I'm going to go back to my T tool and I'm gonna press the letter D again, right? So, and now my letters are not connected, so if I wanted to do something like that, you know, like that, I don't know, you know, however you wanna do it, something funky and cool, maybe a little bit different than we have before, you can do that. And then I'm gonna take all my letters now. This is really important, all right? This is, this is the most important part. I'm gonna take my D, highlight it, all right? I'm gonna hold down my shift button and I'm gonna press my A, and I'm gonna actually just slide right down to the D. And I've now highlighted D, A, D, all in one shot. I'm gonna grab them and drag them down here to the folder, and I've grouped them together in a folder, and I call this dad. Now, for elements, people, you can't do this. Okay, I'm sorry. This is um, actually one of the issues I have sometimes is that I have to ungroup certain things for people when they buy a template from me and they're grouped together. But for Photoshop, full-fledged Photoshop, this is a really cool feature. So now, what I'm gonna do is, I have my dad, I'm gonna take my background copy, place it above my dad in the folder, okay? It's not letter per letter. I'm not taking this picture and putting it letter per letter. I'm placing it above the entire folder and I'm going to right click on the folder and create a clipping mask and I'm clipping it to the folder. But again, you can't see anything. It doesn't really make a difference to you right now because there's nothing to see. Dad just blended right in. So what I would need to do is I'm just gonna shut off that background layer one more time. See the dad letters. Now, we can go through that whole thing that we just did, right? Click on the folder, all right? And I'm going to apply right click and I'm gonna apply blending options to the folder because that works, all right? And I can go through, and, and usually Photoshop will save like the last thing you've done. So if I literally just go back and press bevel, stroke, and drop shadow, I'm gonna get pretty much the same effect that I had exactly going on before. Oh, and contour, which I don't know if I did anything with that. Press okay. I've now reselected, and um, that's pretty much the same thing that I had before. Now I can go back to my clipped copy, turn it on, and now I've clipped it like that. And then you can go back into your, into your folder and you can just move letters using the V or it should just, and then you can switch things around, you know, any way you want, right? Let's say you move, all I'm really doing is hovering over because I have that show transformation tool on and the auto select up here. If I generally, if I just hover over the layer, it will select it for me. It's like I'd say it's like 75% good. Sometimes it doesn't read it. I don't know why. Maybe there's a good reason why 
I don't know. Um, I'm gonna press, and I'm just gonna, you know, maybe I'm gonna make my D larger. Oops. I'm just gonna drag it and maybe make D really big. But again, it gives that illusion that it's passing through the image because I've created, I've made a duplicate layer of the exact same image. Whoopsie, now it didn't find my D like I wanted it to. It found my background image. I'm just gonna go Command Z, step backwards. I'm gonna go back to the D over here. Yep, get the correct D. Press Command T. So sometimes that happens when you move the wrong layer, don't freak out. Okay, I promise. Oops, let me give you a big screen again. Don't freak out, just take a step back, or two or three, Command Z it back. Like just keep command Zing it, right? <laughs> or you know, or go to your history and just step yourself backwards. And then always, this is what I tell everybody, like Photoshop is like you have to think to yourself, something went wrong, what did what happened when what happened? Let me think backwards four steps, let me think forward four steps. You know, it's a lot of problem solving. That's really all it is. And it can get really frustrating, but sometimes you just have to go through your layers and figure it out. All right, I'm gonna press Command T again. I'm gonna move my D over here. Oops, I lost everybody. Let's see ya. All right, and I'm just gonna move it over. It's just sticky right now, let me. But that's pretty much it, right? And let me just show you one more thing. I'm gonna take my my dad. I'm gonna turn off my clipping mask. I'm gonna turn off the effects here. I'm gonna take the effects and drag them and throw them in the garbage, the little garbage pile there. So I removed the effects off of that entire dad folder that have all my dad letters in it. But I still have the effects from the text dad. All you need to do is you can do one of two things. You can take the effects, hold your, curse, uh, your mouse down, drag it up to the folder, and it will, it left the dad and it applied it to the dad folder. But what if you don't want it to leave the dad? Like what if you want to make a duplicate of the effects? Because sometimes I like to, like if I'm working with individual letters, I might want to make a duplicate of the effect. If I put an effect on my D, I might want the exact same effect on the A. So instead of doing that, I'm going to drag the effects, but I'm going to hold my option, I think it's my option, my option button down while I drag my effects and that bring it onto the dad text layer. And what I did was I didn't remove it from the dad folder layer. I just duplicated it onto the dad text layer. So that's like a fun little thing that I learned and use all the time. So again, I'm gonna just turn on my clipped layer and you'll see that dad has been clipped. And then there you go. And of course, you can always add on another text layer. Like um, I'm gonna press the T for text. I'm gonna go to like something swirly. Uh, like I like this font. This is like a new cool font. And I'm gonna bring my font down to like 48. And I'm just gonna write um, I don't like this font. All right, we'll try something else. I really don't like that font. All right, I'll try uh, Belinda. I don't like that one either. So we'll try something like um, magic. Oh, I don't know what's going on with my fonts. I'm not loving them. All right. Okay, just cap it. So oh. I love my dad. And I'm right, I'm just double clicking on there and I can just change out the fonts if I want to until I find something that I like. No, I really don't like that one either. But to get the idea, and then you can move that font around too. And you can also apply all the effects, any effect to the new font layer. That's pretty much it. So, all right, um, that's pretty much all I got today for you. Um, I'm going to shut it off, let's see. Oh, wait, okay, so somebody had written you can also put three different photos in the letters when they're, yes, yes. So yes, 
So one of the cool and nice things about breaking up your letters is if you um, if you open up your folder that has all your letters, let's say I wanted just this copy. I'm just going to take this, this right there, and I'm going to drag it down here. Um, of course, I have no effects on there right now. So I'm going to do exactly what I told you. I'm going to hold my Option key down, drag all those effects to the letter D. Okay, and it skipped itself to the letter A. Sometimes it just does that, and you have to just keep playing. I'm going to hold my Option key, drag it to the D. All right, and I'm going to do it again to the other D, and that's how I have easily and quickly added effects to all of my letters. And so instead of clipping anything to the folder, which would clip it to everything inside the folder, um, but which by the way, if you added more letters inside the folder, whatever you clipped to it would be would show through. So I'm going to right click, create clipping mask, and now I've clipped it to, oh, I don't know why that stroke is so large. That's very strange, I don't know what happened. All right, don't know why. I don't know, something weird and funky happened that you'll have to play with. But yes, so you can literally do that. You can apply it to each letter individually, and then I could put a different picture in here, and I could put a different picture in here, and that's how, you know, those really fun templates that I have where it says mom or dad, that's how you do it. You have different letters, and then you put different pictures into each letter, and I usually apply strokes to those letters for everybody so that they can easily add lines around them or not, um, and that's, yeah, that's pretty much, I think that's pretty much it. So I don't know if anyone else has any questions. Oh, you're welcome, Deb. So I'm gonna go back up here and let's see. All right, so any questions? I'm here for questions. I could always bring my computer back to Photoshop. You're welcome, you're welcome. I hope it was enjoyable. It will live in the units for everybody. Um, as I learn things, I'll show you, you know, I love it. I love Photoshop and I love that you guys are on this ride with me. So thank you. And, um, that's it. So stay on for a couple more questions. If anybody has anything, you're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. Good, good, good. All right. Well, I hope everyone's feeling good, staying healthy. If you're in New York like I am, the weather is really nice today, so I'm going to go take my dog for a walk in a few minutes and social distance somewhere. I don't know what the weather's like where you are or even if it's daytime or nighttime. But um, you're welcome, Andrew. You're welcome, Sandra. Um, so you're very welcome. I can't read everyone's names, but I'll be able to see it when I look on Facebook. Um, all right. Yes, time to play. Time to play. Any questions? Questions. I like questions. Go for it. So, all right. Well, usually I do my, I just want to tell you, I usually do these tutorials after three o'clock because I do have a, another job in, in a totally different world. I'm a speech pathologist and I work in a school district. And so even though we're distance learning right now, my hours are usually like till three o'clock. So I try not to do any tutorials on Facebook before that because I need to be working on the other work stuff. So, uh, all right. Good, so I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody now and um, hit me up with any questions in the comments. Again, this will all be in the units for you guys to look back on. Um, spread the word, we'll do more tutorials, let people know about the tutorials that we're doing in this group. And um, you know, there's always really, really good tutorials, by the way, and my friend Andrew, who is here in his group, in the Photoshop and Lightroom group, which is like a large group that's pushing 100,000 people go there because that place is that, they, they have so many good stuff, so much good stuff. So check out that Facebook group too. Um, all right, talk to y'all soon, bye. Oh yeah, Andrew, I'll put a link to your group there in the top. Andrew says, woohoo. Um, oh, Andrew, what, what's the next tutorial? Something really good is coming up. And I forgot what it was, but I know it was something I wanted to watch. Something something that I was interested in seeing and learning about. I'm on a delay, so I'm just gonna wait. 
tomorrow. What's what's your tutorial tomorrow? Because you have something really good. I'm just slipping my mind. Too much on my mind. Content aware. That's it. I'm going to that, you guys. Tomorrow in the Photoshop and Lightroom group that Andrew Cavanaugh is like the founder of all these amazing groups. He's got a content aware. I want to learn that because when Photoshop changed things in the new edition, they changed content aware and I really have no idea how to use it. All right. He's got the link. Go there tomorrow. All right. Bye, guys.